Follow us on social media. Support us on Patreon. All links in description below. On March 9, 2018, the U.S. Air Force officially retired Predator, a platform that initiated a new era of unmanned air combat. Predator were known for their ability to deliver precision strikes as their controllers sat halfway around the world in small and discreet bunkers. The decision to pull the MQ-1 Predator fleet is pre-planned, but its legacy will carry on in the form of its bigger brother, the MQ-9 Reaper, an aircraft that will become the mainstay of U.S. Air Force drone operations. In this video, Defense Updates list the top five improvements in MQ-9 Reaper when compared with MQ-1 Predator drones. Let's get started. Number five. Predator has endurance of 24 hours, service ceiling of 25,000 feet, range of 675 miles or 1,100 kilometers, and a max speed of 135 miles per hour or 217 kilometers per hour. Reaper has endurance of 27 hours, surface ceiling of 50,000 feet, range of 1,151 miles or 1,852 kilometers, and a max speed of 300 miles per hour or 482 kilometers per hour. The U.S. Air Force has plans to acquire extended range ER upgrade kits for almost all Reapers. With the ER kit, Reapers will have an endurance of up to 42 hours without external stores. Reaper, because of its much better performance, will be able to carry out missions which were not possible with Predator and for which U.S. Air Force had to rely on traditional aircrafts. Number four. The Predator has a wingspan of 55 feet. It's 27 feet long, 6.9 feet high, and has an empty weight of 1,130 pounds, or 512 kilograms. While the Reaper has a wingspan of 66 feet, is 36 feet long, 12.5 feet high, and an empty weight of 4,901 pounds, or 2,223 kilograms. While the Reaper is much bigger than the Predator, the two killing machines cost about the same to fly. Figures released in 2013 put the cost per hour of Predator flights at $3,679, compared to $4,762 for the Reaper. That contrasts with $68,362 per hour for an F-22 fighter or $169,313 per hour for a B-2 stealth bomber. Number three. Reaper's main sensor is the nose-mounted MTSB multispectral surveillance and targeting turret and its fuselage-mounted Lynx synthetic aperture radar. But Reaper's pylons are very versatile and can be used to carry a variety of tactical equipment, like communications relay hops, electronic warfare pods, as well as Wide Area Aerial Surveillance WAS, camera arrays. The additional sensors will act in conjunction with the drone's main sensors. The USAF is also planning to put more potent radars on board some Reapers. The idea is to create ground-moving targeting identification GMTI, sensor nodes that can be dispersed around the war zone. GMTI is a radar capability that can be used to trail moving objects on the ground over time using radar. This will go a long way in replacing E-8C J-STARS planes in a decentralized manner and to increase capability for the critical GMTI mission set. Number two. The Predator can only carry two Hellfire missiles. The Reaper's hardpoints give it the ability to deploy a combination of AGM-114 Hellfire, GBU-12 Paveway, and GBU-38 JDAM munitions. Generally, a Reaper's external payload totals no more than about 2,500 pounds on a strike mission, but that enables the Reaper to carry four Hellfire missiles and a pair of harder-hitting 500-pound paveways or JDAMs. AGM-114 Hellfire air-to-surface missile is capable of precision strikes. The versatile missile has been in operation from 1984. It can be used with many types of warheads like high-explosive anti-tank heat or tandem anti-armor metal augmented charge MAC, or shape charge blast fragmentation. 
GBU-12 Paveway is an aerial laser-guided bomb based on the Mark 82 500-pound general purpose bomb but with the addition of a nose-mounted laser seeker and fins for guidance. The U.S. Department of Defense has upgraded GBU-12 production versions to include GPS guidance modes, making the bomb more accurate. The GBU-38 Joint Direct Attack Munition JDIM, 500-pound bomb is manufactured by Boeing using the Mark 82 bomb body. JDAM is a guidance kit that converts unguided bombs or dumb bombs into all-weather smart munitions. JDAM equipped bombs are guided by an integrated inertial guidance system coupled to a global positioning system GPS, receiver, giving them a published range of up to 15 nautical miles or 28 kilometers. In the future, guided micro-munitions will give Reapers a more flexible weapon stack. Number 1. Predator was never designed with the ability to defend itself against enemy jets. There were many deployed in zones where threats were relatively low and U.S. Air Force was in control. Reapers don't have this kind of advantage, as future operations may not be so easy. It's been seen that in Syria, Russian fighters often shadow Reapers. It should be noted that drones' pilots have limited situational awareness. If a drone is brought down, it's hard to confirm how and by whom it was attacked. Reapers, like Predator, currently doesn't have any air-to-air -air missiles, but this is going to change. Reaper as a platform can accommodate air-to-air -air missile. The Air Force Life Cycle Management Center AFL -CMC, Medium Altitude UAS Division revealed on the 7th of March that it's planned to award the original equipment manufacturer OEM, a contract for the development of Reaper air-to-air -air missile RAAM, aviation simulation. This will be the first step in the process of deploying an air-to-air -air missile in Reaper and would represent a significant move towards giving it self-defense capability. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.